Hello, I'm Dr. Zen Gandhi, one of the GP partners at Wellspring Surgery, and I'm here just to explain a few simple things that may help to make your time uh, working at the practice a little bit easier and also to help the flow for patients. Um, when you arrive at the practice, hopefully you should be able to have access to the computers quite quickly and effectively through the login. I can't show you this on our screenshot because unfortunately it closes the um, screen grabs and stuff, um, but effectively um, we will have a login access for all locums or people working in the practice, uh, which can be arranged through our um, either practice manager or deputy practice manager. If there's any questions, grab one of the GPs in one of the rooms around. At Wellspring, we um, offer a variety of different appointments to our patients. Um, these can either be online pre-bookable appointments, so a planned appointment. As you can see, these little yellow slots on the rotor. We also offer one day in advance appointments, which are normally booked by the triage and GP, as you can see by these darker purple slots here. And then finally, on the day, we have what we call our face-to-face -face access spots. So these are um, appointments that are slotted in by the assessing GP um, on the day for access issues. And these are the salmon pink ones that you can see here. Um, we have a variety of other appointments that are offered for our nursing team, as indicated here, and as well as uh, telephone slots that a lot of the other doctors will use, as you can see here in terms of the blue. If you're ever curious about who the Encore GP may be, um, whilst this should be up on the rotor in your room, it's whoever's got these um, turquoisey blue slots. So we have three different GPs on call, morning, um, mid-afternoon and evening. Um, simple things that may help. So um, just to try and make prescribing a little bit easier, we actually have a formulary based at the practice. So this is um, something that picks out particular medications that may be more effective or simpler to use. Um, in order to make sure that you have access to this when you first log in, um, worth opening up a test patient like Bugs Bunny, as you can see here, and then simply going to acute prescriptions and making sure you've got formulary entries ticked. This will therefore mean when you type in a medication, for example, Tritan, that you get the first option at the top, which is normally what our preferred formulary option for medications would be. It's not to say you can't prescribe any other kind of items, but the benefit of using this is that when you try and prescribe it, it'll also give you the indications and dosing instructions for a lot of common medications. Um, there are certain situations where there are other locally recommended options um, and they try and pick those out for you. Another thing that we have at Wellspring, as many of the Nottingham City practices have, is something called F12. If you know how to use this, that's great. If you don't, it is very simple to use. Um, you do need to load it up on the first time that you use the computers. In order to do that, you press the F12 shortcut on your keyboard. When you do so, you'll get this little template come up. If you've already got it up and running, you'll see these two little things here. If you haven't, simply go to the search box, type in F12. And as you can see, there are these two little data templates. So data template and Pathfinder. Simply right click and add to favorites on the data templates and do the same with the Pathfinder. Whichever one you put the Pathfinder into, if it's A or B, then when you open up F12, um, all you do is F12 and then the Pathfinder one, so A, for example, and it launches this little toolkit. So it's a list of templates designed to try and help um, in terms of referring patients. One of the main reasons for using this is that in terms of up-to-date information, it will always be kept on this template. So making sure that you do the right referral process for your patients and things. There's also lots of really helpful guidance in terms of what kind of things should be referred, what kind of things locally may be better options in terms of managing or guidance for patients even. So for example, if we look at the mental health, it has various different things in terms of toolkits, um, ADHD monitoring, that kind of stuff. But actually if you go to the IAPT, so um, psychological health, um, if people want to refer themselves or give you the contact details, um, in our practice for psychological help and counselling, it is all self-referral, so the patients do not need a referral from the GP. Contact details are all here. You can either give that, or we have cards that should be in your room that you can give to the patient. Additionally, if you're concerned about more urgent issues, numbers for crisis teams, urgent health advice, for example. Um, and the main thing is these will be kept up to date by the secondary care services, so you can be sure that, generally speaking, you have the most up-to-date information to help our patients. Um, and, and this is the case for most of the various different sources that you can see. So feel free to have a, a little look and explore um, in terms of what you need to do from there.
Additionally, one of the things that we have within the practice is something to help you um, streamline your workflow. So what we call auto consultations. Now, unfortunately on your screen, it will be slightly different. It will be a little tab like this settings one up here that says auto consultations. And when you click on it, you'll get a toolbar that looks like this. Various different ones that we recommend using. The main ones from a clinical perspective that will be effective is the test one. So simply put, these are how to request these variety of tests, so whether this ear syringing as a treatment for our patients, ECGs, echocardiograms, H. pylori, and x-rays. X-rays you still request um, via the ICE um, toolkit, which hopefully you should have access to. If you don't, please let us know and we can arrange that for you. Echocardiograms are slightly more complicated. They need to be done by a separate service. If you do want to request an echocardiogram, just click on this. It gives you the instructions of what you need to do and how to arrange that. ECGs, ear syringing, and H. pylori um, all have various things within their protocol that happen. When you, for example, you click on ECG, you need to inform the patient that they need to share their records. This normally shouldn't be an issue, as you can see here, but if the consent is not yes and yes, then it does make it basically we can't refer them. Confirm, they'll ask you to confirm again, and then afterwards simply select the service, ECG. Information as to how to the most appropriate thing. So this is for non-urgent ECGs, patients over the age of 18, and they'll be contacted within the next two working days to do so. When you click OK, it will then bring up a little thing saying, have you confirmed the patient's address and phone contact details? This is important. We can't contact the patient without so. And then the other thing it will do is create a task, um, which unfortunately you can't see because of the way that, ah, there we are. Um, create a task that is then sent automatically to the relevant receptionist for them to book and contact the patient to do so. Um, hopefully you'll find that helpful in terms of being able to do things. If you do, for any reason, need to grab any help, um, a lot of the doctors should be in place. Um, in terms of accessing that simply, um, you can either knock on our doors or if you're just a non-urgent kind of thing, feel free to just use the messaging system. Um, as I said, I'm Dr. Sain Gandhi, as you can see there. Uh, normally in room seven, we've got a variety of other practitioners that are normally in practice and stuff that so you feel free to contact. Um, the partners of the practice are Dr. St. Gandhi, Dr. Bertram Koresh, and we also have Dr. Uh, Sally Kaplan, Dr. Alison Teed, and Dr. Mandy Neville. Um, in terms of referral forms, we do ask all of our um, locums to use a form just to give us an idea of what they've referred as partly for um, internal referral tracking that we do and also to make sure that the right processes happen because actually a lot of referrals can be managed in-house. Um, so things like minor surgeries we do in-house in terms of other referrals for, for example, physiotherapy, occupational health, that kind of thing. There is a list on your each notice board in terms of how to, patients can either self-refer or where you need to direct them and stuff. Um, if there are visits and you've agreed to do so, just click on the bottom of your screen, then that will bring up the visits list. Um, as you can see, we don't have any at them this moment in time, um, but um, we will obviously discuss how that happens if you've agreed to do visits for us. I hope you find this helpful and useful. Um, there are lots of other things that we can show you and I'm more than happy to speak to any people working in the practice to give them support and things. And if any questions, just feel free to knock on our doors. Thank you very much. All the best. Bye.